Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I remember this one time where a friend of mine showed me a clip of something on his phone. The clip had something I've never seen before, and I got scared because I didn't know what it was, and I thought it was a monster. He tried to say it wasn't a monster, but I think it was because I still have nightmares about what I saw to this day. And I should know because nothing on my bed is actually on my bed when I wake up in the morning anymore. Wormy is the episode where Spongebob and Patrick play with a worm while pet sitting Sandy's pets when she's out of town and think that the worm got eaten when a butterfly who they think is a monster appears in the jar. This episode aired on February 17, 2001 and is the first episode of the series to air in 2001. This episode is also the 50th individual episode of the series and is the first appearance of Sandy Cheeks in season 2. Now sure, in episode 47, Bubble Buddy, her voice was heard. SpongeBob went south for the winter. Love, Sandy. But Sandy herself was never physically shown in this episode, and because of that, I never personally considered her to appear in that episode. From this episode onwards, there are a couple of slight design changes with Sandy, similar to Patrick going from seasons 1 to 2. In season 1, Patrick's eyebrows kind of looked like a sideways M, and season 2 onwards, they look more like a Z. As for Sandy, in season 1, the yellow patch on her spacesuit has three dots on it, and her tail is presumably stuffed inside her suit as well. Starting with this episode, Sandy has a black acorn on the patch of her spacesuit, and her tail is outside of her suit. And this design would be what is used in the show moving forwards. This episode is also notorious for scarring children for life because of a certain scene that occurs three times throughout the episode. I should know because I remember after I watched this episode for the first time, I would stop watching this episode during the first night scene when Wormy would transform. But we'll get to that later. So since this episode scarred a bunch of children for life, that must mean this is not a good episode, right? Well, let's watch this episode and find that out for ourselves. So the episode starts up and the French narrator says that Spongebob and Patrick are pet sitting for Sandy while she's out of town. Patrick whistles to the bird and tells Spongebob that he spoke Italian. Bonjour, mes amis. That was me speaking Russian for the first time. Sandy finishes explaining her instructions and showing her pets to Spongebob and Patrick and heads out. Spongebob notices her caterpillar named Wormy and Sandy said that Wormy doesn't eat much. Spongebob and Patrick thought Wormy was adorable and decided to take him out to play with him. They play a few rounds of hide and seek, then they dance with Wormy to a montage of a song. At the end of the day, Spongebob and Patrick talk about how much fun they had with Wormy. They give him a best friend ribbon, put him back in his jar, and walk home very sad to leave him. That night, Wormy changed from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Wait, if Wormy was a caterpillar, then why was he named Wormy? The next morning, Spongebob and Patrick head back to the tree dome and see the butterfly. They let Wormy out of the jar and they think something bad happened to Wormy and then following that is the scene that scarred everybody for life. Holy f What the hell was that? Spongebob and Patrick think that the butterfly was a monster that ate Wormy and tried to run away, but the butterfly moved in front of the door and they hid behind the tree. Spongebob sees a monster again and hides in a barrel with Patrick. They worry that the monster might eat Sandy's other pets and try to get rid of it. So what did happen with the other pets anyway? They try to trap it in another jar with a ringing phone, but that didn't work. Patrick was dressed as bait to get the monster's attention for Spongebob to use a net. The loud buzzing scared Patrick, who then destroyed the net by accident. Spongebob got scared again, but then he managed to trap the butterfly inside a bubble and Patrick releases it outside the tree dome. But this was no good because it was going straight for the Krusty Krab. Spongebob and Patrick used a secret entrance to get in the Krusty Krab. <laughs> that is the biggest secret entrance I've ever seen. Spongebob and Patrick tackle Squidward and Mr. Krabs and try to warn them about the monster and how it ate Wormy which annoyed Squidward. Squidward and Mr. Krabs look at the monster, and since it just looked like a tiny insect, they got off the boat, much to Spongebob and Patrick's horror. Squidward and Mr. Krabs laugh at the insect, but the loud buzzing scared them away too. Spongebob and Patrick thought the monster ate them as well, and set out to warn the citizens of Bikini Bottom. Spongebob and Patrick ran around Bikini Bottom, making everybody aware of the monster, and the Bikini Bottomites become absolutely petrified not only by the news, but at the sight of the monster too. Chaos spread all throughout Bikini Bottom, 
but SpongeBob was satisfied thinking of what could have happened if they didn't warn the town about the monster. Ha! All that happened, and they still warned the town. Then the monster appeared, and everybody started to run away in fright. The monster followed them everywhere, behind buildings, through stop signs, and out the roof of a building, all to wacky chase music. A couple days later, Sandy returned to Bikini Bottom and was surprised to find the town in shambles and seemingly abandoned. Sandy finds Wormy and says he shouldn't have changed yet. Then why did he? She contains Wormy in a jar, the town cheers for saving them, and carries her away, much to Sandy's happy surprise, and the episode ends. So that was Wormy, and I think it's a pretty good episode. But as I mentioned earlier, I was also one of those kids scarred when they saw the close-up of the butterfly. After viewing it for the first time and being startled by the aforementioned, there was a while where I would stop watching it around the first nighttime scene, right as Wormy changed to a butterfly. Sometimes I would watch it up until the part where Spongebob and Patrick see the butterfly in the jar and then stop after that. I would either leave the room and cover my ears or just turn the TV off altogether and hope that when I turn it back on, the close-up shots with the loud buzzing scenes would have been over. As a result, there was a lot about this episode I very much forgot about as a kid. As I got older and realized how much I liked the show, I would just squint and mute the TV instead of turning the TV off altogether. Now when I watch it these days, I can watch it mostly without issue. I still think the close-up is hideous as all hell, but the reactions by all the characters is hilarious and makes it worth it. In addition to that, I also quite respect the crew for not being afraid to make this thing a bit scarier because kids can watch this episode when they get older and they will respect it for having those scary scenes and be impressed with what it got away with. Kids shows these days won't feature this kind of tone. Whether we're talking about shows like Paw Patrol from Nick Jr. or even shows on regular ass Nickelodeon these days. Hell, even the more recent seasons of Spongebob barely even try to have scary or even startling moments these days. But that's a topic for another day. Despite that, something we may not have known is that the close-up of the insect here wasn't even a butterfly. It was a horsefly, which means that butterflies aren't even the things we were scared of. But of course, as a kid, you won't know that, and the purpose of these scenes is to be scary, and I think they were quite successful with that. There's another takeaway from this episode I've always had. 12th Street Rag, the title card music used here, I've always loved. I've talked about this before, but this track is one of my favorite Spongebob music tracks of all time. The title card music was also used in the title card for episode 38, Fools in April, before this, as well as a few others. But I saw this episode before Fools in April as a child, and with 12th Street Rag being the title card music here, I would always think of this episode when I hear it in a future episode. Especially because it plays in the scene where Spongebob, Patrick, and the Bikini Bottomites are running away from the butterfly near the end. Sometimes I would say, The wormy music. Or, Ooh, the wormy music. Whenever I hear it in an episode. The tone I would just say it in depends on how well it fits the scene. But whenever I hear that song in an episode, I would always think of this episode. Nowadays, if I hear it in one of the more recent episodes, I don't really think of it that way, but it will always be one of, if not my favorite, Spongebob music tracks. And now it's time to talk about this episode for what it's worth. I've always loved the song in this episode, which is called That's What Friends Do, that plays when Spongebob and Patrick are dancing with Wormy. I love the secret entrance to the Krusty Krab, and when Spongebob and Patrick tackle Mr. Krabs when Squidward is trying to take a pic of Mr. Krabs. It's also absolutely hilarious seeing everybody in Bikini Bottom get scared out of their wits whenever they see the butterfly. That's just good comedy all around. The finger puppets Spongebob had of Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and Wormy I always thought was a cute detail. Even though there was a lot I forgot about this episode, rewatching it over the last few years has really helped me remember what's great about it. I loved when this guy jumped out of his house and missed the target, that brief shot of Spongebob in a cheerleader uniform, and when he finds Patrick immediately after counting to 1000. I always loved Spongebob and Patrick thinking the animals were speaking Italian. However, I did always wonder why they don't touch on Sandy's other pets throughout most of this episode. Obviously, the story needs to happen, but it's something I always had in the back of my mind after watching it. This is also something I didn't think of until recently. Obviously, caterpillars are what turned into butterflies, but since this caterpillar is named Wormy, I kind of thought that he was just a regular worm, just green. Especially since Sandy doesn't specifically say he's a caterpillar, and she even named him Wormy for crying out loud. 
and this made the transformation feel a bit odd when I really thought about it. Admittedly, the name Caterpillar E isn't very good, and Wormy rolls off the tongue much better. Unless this was supposed to be a twist that Wormy was actually a caterpillar, but that was never really made clear, and it didn't feel like it was supposed to be something like that, so I don't know. But like I mentioned earlier, I've had a complicated history with this episode, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint stuff to say about it. But overall, I think it's a great episode. Despite how I was a little scared from this episode from time to time and didn't watch it properly for a long time, I still think it's a fun watch and it's great looking back at it in retrospect and I applaud it for having the balls to include that scary close up and buzzing sound. It definitely made it much more impactful regardless if it was comedy or actually trying to scare the piss out of kids. Wormy is a good episode. It has a lot of funny sequences and character moments and was very successful at everything it set out to do. Even though it has scarred several kids for life, that doesn't mean it's horrible, it's just a bit different than what might come from most other episodes, but still pretty good in my opinion. And even though I can watch that episode without issues now, I still haven't gotten over whatever that thing was that my friend showed me. <sighs> I just hope I can sleep tonight. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, oh, that hurt. Now I'm scarred again.